Alright, well hi there. I just came home from a rather lengthy trip to visit some relatives on the mainland Finland and before doing that I figured they almost have me fixing stuff so I pretty much packed up my entire workshop in a cardboard box and uh, I've got to unpack it and I figured hey might as well do an unboxing because apparently YouTube likes that stuff. So well, let's go. Right. I've never bothered actually getting a proper toolbox because I always log around so much stuff when I actually log stuff around. So cardboard boxes like this tend to work well. Just a random strap, which belongs to my Volvo, as trapped to recommend. So let's see what I thought I'd use. Underwear. That is actually my multimeter case. I tend to just uh, wrap it in some old underwear because this is a rather expensive multimeter and this looks a lot less inviting for some random thief than a nice shiny red multimeter does. Oh. Broken Apple charger, a UPS shipping bag with DSLR charger and video camera charger. A very long three and a half mil to three and a half mil audio cable. Screwdrivers, cheap from Lidl. A clamp, also cheap from Lidl. I don't use those a lot. A lot of cables. And a broken roll of solder that I got for free because somebody over factory part of jabbed a soldering iron in it, so it's kind of horrible, but it does the job. Hmm, this might be. Yeah. An entire box full of LED drivers and LEDs. I actually installed some LEDs in the ceiling for my dad and they came in handy. Got rid of a few one watt LEDs. He did have an old mascot linear current uh, <laughs> uh, battery charger that we were able to use for the power supply so I didn't have to give him a proper LED driver. That was nice. And an old mascot linear battery charger is probably a bit more reliable than Deal Extreme. No, short electronics LED driver. Although probably not quite sufficient. Random tools. Not much to say. More clamps. I actually bought these on the trip. Didn't bring them along. Nothing much to see there. A battery box. With. USB capacitance tester and ESR meter. Probes. Pieces of copper wire with banana plaques on them. And green wire. As well as alligator clips. Cheap precision screwdriver kit. I've had this thing for at least seven years. No, it must be almost ten years by now. Got them when I was a kid. Still have all the pieces. More cheap screwdrivers. Powerfix, proper legal quality. 
disclaimer, I actually tend not to buy two of the Lidl, but uh, my grandfather quite likes that store, so for every Christmas I get at least a few Lidl tools. And these are just glass fuses. This is a quite important thing you should always bring with you when you go a long way. Soldering station, thermal paste, isopropyl alcohol, flux pen, black marker, desoldering pump, solder braid, a soldering station, a tool for removing tips from your soldering station, your soldering pen, your soldering pen stand, more solder braid, more solder, an empty solder braid container, and no solder tips. Never bring your solder tips. You don't need those, I guarantee. My solder tips are actually... Right there. And that's where they've been for the last few weeks. So... I did have to solder, so I got to do that with a 6 euro soldering iron, which got to may maybe 600 degrees Celsius or so. At least it wasn't too cold. No cold joint for that, no sir. Come on. And finally, I think... proper bench power supply. Use this to fix those LEDs for my father and to troubleshoot my grandfather's car. Maybe a bit overkill but rubber bat. It's not like I <laughs> couldn't fit it in the box. And that just about does it. All the stuff I brought along for a 600 kilometer car trip. I actually used most of this stuff. Granted, they kind of count on me to do every repair around the houses. Hmm. By the way, this is my old soldering station, which I bought for 5 euro from a friend of mine when he upgraded it. This thing. It's probably around, I'd say, 11 years old. I think they cost about 40 euros new. And I've even modified it with a backlight. Check that out. This, because this thing doesn't have a power LED, it, it would almost get... I'd always forget to turn it off. And this stand is actually another cheaper soldering station of the same brand from the same store which was my first one but uh, I the iron fall apart on that and I just reused this stand because the one that you got with this thing was horrible and since I live out in nowhere where everything's expensive I tend to raid the a large international low price change when I get, go to the mainland and this is what I bought from Bilte, my Swedish low-ish price but sometimes reasonable uh, retailer. Two hammers because I owned zero. Big ruler, metal. 50 centimeters. Doesn't seem to be bent. 
12 meters of thick wire. Here to go into my solar system. A good thing when you buy cable from a brick and mortar store, I paid a bit more than I would have on the internet, but this way I actually get to feel and uh, look at the cable to ensure that it is reasonable quality. And in my mind that's kind of worth the extra 20% or so that you pay for it. It's not a huge amount of money at play anyway. One of these things. Wood chisel. Got another one as well. Somewhere. As I dropped it. There we go. Why the wood chisel? I'm going to need those if I'm going to deframe any, more, any windows for my solar panels about which there are going to be some videos soon so if you like that kind of stuff do subscribe <laughs> anyway battery clamps battery clamps battery clamps battery clamps battery clamps and battery clamps one of these 90 degree things, pretty bad quality, but I didn't do much work with them, and it didn't cost a whole lot. Receipts, receipts. Air hose, because my old one is made out of plastic and it's broken in two. Battery clamps. Battery clamps. Uh, some kind of uh, waterproof car connectors. They were pretty cheap, and these two are going into the solar system. I'm going to try and connect my panels up through these. Car fuses. Car fuses. Those flat, whatever they're called, doesn't say in English, fast tips contactor. Flash 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 tips contactor. Hmm. Not assortment. European civilized threading. Washer assortment. Uh, host connection. More host connections. Car fuses. Car fuses. And more car fuses. Lots and lots of car fuses because I'm probably going to blow a few when I get them onto my batteries. And more flash tips contactor. I actually have no idea what these are in English. But the kind of connectors you get on small sleigh batteries and such. Everybody should know these. Weird it doesn't say in English on them. And finally. A pretty cheap uh, proprietary screwdriver thingy. It's got tri wings and those weird bendy Phillips ish thingies and security torques and stuff like that. Always handy and it costs a couple of euros. And save for another receipt from Lidl. <laughs> That's it. Save for a bag itself, which is okay, I guess. That's pretty much it. <laughs> we got ourselves pretty decent pile of stuff. Went for about 170 euros in total. Would have been at least twice that much if I bought it locally. So even though it's not quite as cheap as it is online, but I like going to brick and mortar stores. So stuff like these battery clamps, you rarely want to have a look at them before you buy them. And cables in particular, because you could easily get ripped off. These were, <laughs> I don't know, mostly an impulse buy, I needed a couple of them. 
50 amps to your right in your in your dreams. These hammers are really okay though. They are one solid piece of steel, quite massive. I feel very sturdy, although I haven't tried them out properly. I am quite certain they are going to be superior to this, which is the only hammer I currently own. And that <laughs> duct tape is not just for show. It uh, the head came off first time I ever used it. Should just throw that away. And yeah, that'll probably be it. I've been going on for long enough about this stuff. So cheerio. Thanks for watching and oh yeah. If you are interested, I will promise that there are going to be solar panel videos coming up. Mm hmm.